Hi, I'm Mark and welcome to this very special episode of the Service Design Show. This episode is fully dedicated to in-house service design. And you're going to hear about some of the specific challenges in-house service designers face and also get some advice on how to be more successful as an in-house service designer. But before we dive into the stories that we're going to share, I want to give you uh, the background story of how this episode came to be. So there's no denying that more and more organizations are building their internal design capabilities. And that means that in-house service design is growing very fast. And being an in-house service designer is completely different than working at an agency or a consultancy. For instance, when you're in-house, it's often difficult uh, to find people who share the same passion, uh, have the same background and use those people as, as peers to get feedback, to challenge your ideas, to basically level up uh, your skills. And also it's, you know, when you're an in-house service designer, you're often seen as the expert, the person who needs to know and have all the answers. But sometimes you don't know if you're doing things right and you don't have somebody around you who you can talk to and, and share ideas with, which is completely different from an agency where you're surrounded by people who you can talk to. So to do something about this, I started um, a group this summer, which I called the campfire sessions. So what are the campfire sessions? Well, the campfire sessions or the campfire as we uh, tend to call it, is a small group of eight in-house service designers um, from different countries, different organizations. Um, and we create a space where we can meet on a regular basis to exchange ideas, get advice and share the challenges um, we or they face in this case. And I'm really excited as we've just finished the first round of these campfire sessions. And I'm going to introduce you to Kari, Jacqueline and Rachel, who were part of this experience. They're all in-house service designers from very different organizations. And uh, in a minute, they're going to share with you what are some of the specific challenges in-house service, in service designers face and how you can be more successful uh, as an in-house service designer. So like I said, we just finished the first round of these campfires. The next round is starting very soon. At the end of this episode, I'll tell you how you can join. And um, I want to be very clear up front that there is an application process as we've just got space for eight people in the group. So if you're interested in joining, make sure you stick around till the very end of this episode. Now it's time to sit back, relax and enjoy the conversation with Carrie, Jacqueline, Rachel and myself. Let the show begin. Hey, everybody. Hi. Good to see you back all in this smaller edition of the campfire. Uh, let's do a quick uh, introduction round and maybe you want to start Jacqueline. Sure. Uh, my name is Jacqueline Brew. I am a service design manager at Shopify. Uh, I've been there for about two and a half years. Um, I was the first service design hire that they had sort of the first explicit sort of service design hire. There are several folks internally practicing, but um, I've worked remotely for Shopify since I started. So a lot of what we've had to do lately um, is a lot of sort of remote collaboration um, and doing virtual service design. And um, I have a small team and I currently work within the support organization. Uh, I live in Northern Virginia in the United States. And mm. I'm, I'll stop there. Sorry, there's construction. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Uh, thanks. Uh, Kari, how about you? Sure. So I'm Kari Oyanin. I'm the practice lead of interaction and service design at RBC, Royal Bank of Canada. Live in Toronto, Canada. And uh, I've been with RBC for just a little bit less than five years now. Started in a different uh, role, in a hands-on role, when the team was just really kind of forming uh, things were quite ad hoc i was a product design lead at first and uh then been uh in the practice lead role for the last two and a half years or so um our team as a whole uh is the digital design team there's 170 of us on the team um i have about 40 42 people 
sort of under me uh, as the interaction uh, and service designers. And um, um, I myself, with a number of colleagues, we formed the design operations team. So there's a few practice lead roles and a couple other roles that are part hmm. of that group. Awesome. So we have Shopify, we have a bank. Rachel, let's uh, cross the ocean. Uh, how about you? Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Rachel Liu. I'm based in the UK, working for Pearson Education. It's actually just over my third year anniversary. It was on the 19th. Um, so um, I started actually as part of the user experience team as a lead there. And service design has been a new practice that I've been building for the last just under two years in January. Um, so it's been kind of a really small but more leaner kind of way where our team in London was started from three of us and now it's 14. Um, and we're still kind of growing that practice to have more leaner, newer ways and a more of an agency kind of model. So we look at different projects to kind of try and to make things a bit more human centered. Um, but looking beyond products and looking at a service, like what does education look like as a service to our learners and wider stakeholders? Mm. Education as a service. Awesome. Um, so uh, we were with a bigger group, uh, but uh, we focused this session on uh, the conversation with the three of us. Now, when I came up with the idea of the campfires, it literally, it was an idea that I had for, I don't know, over a year for sure. And at, on a Friday afternoon, I was just like, I need to just do this. Let's make it into a prototype. Send out an email, posted it on LinkedIn. And uh, to my surprise, uh, some of you uh, replied and sent in uh, a really awesome message telling me that, hey, I wanna be part of this this first experiment. Now, I'm, I'm really curious, what was the thing that appealed you to the campfires? Because there weren't any campfires, well, there were campfires, but not <laughs> the in-house service design campfires that we, uh, we were going to organize. Like, what attracted you in this? Um, anyone, Jacqueline, want to comment on that? Sure, yeah, I think, um, so I, this is the, Second time I've built, I've sort of been the first service designer in with an, organ an organization in-house. I've actually always been in-house, even as a product designer uh, before getting into service design. Um, so I was at Capital One first, uh, which is where I kind of got into service design, and then Fannie Mae, where I built that out, and then now Shopify. And the the idea of being able to chat uh, with other folks who are trying to you know, scale service design in-house was very attractive. Uh, there's a lot, um, I mean, from the campfires thus far, it was very validating that a lot of some of the things that, you know, I've been struggling with, um, mostly in terms of just organizational change that we sort of need to happen in order to really uh, enable good service design practice to happen and to accelerate the, the impact. Um, but it was just really, I think it was appealing to just chat with folks and to hear other stories from mm. folks who are specifically in-house, which I think a lot of, you know, a lot of the articles that are published online and the blog posts and the stories, a lot come from consultants. Um, and that's obviously just as valid in terms of, you know, service design as a practice, but there is a, it's sort of when you take the practice and then you, and you put it in the context of an in-house team, I think there's a, it's, it's very um, nuanced and it's just been great to chat with other folks. Hmm. And how about you, Rachel? What was the thing that made it interesting for you to reach out? Very similar, actually. So I've worked both in-house and in an agency. But the most interesting one about the in-house perspective is that, firstly, not many people know about it. The lack of awareness and not many people in-house actually talk about it either. Maybe they don't have time or capacity to, to actually have the chance to reflect. So I think that was really a nice invitation for you to kind of go, let's try this, let's be open with this. Um, so I think that curiosity kind of went, oh, wow, it's a great opportunity to learn from other people. Um, and my first service design hire, who was a contractor, she, he came from an agency background. So it was really fresh perspective to bring in. But I wanted to have both kind of seeing what is it like for another in-house 
but also what is it like for that agency to model. Hmm. Gary, anything you want to add to that? Similar things. Um, I was looking forward to hearing, um, at least I made the assumption that I would hear, I have the opportunity to hear from a global perspective. There would be people in this group from across the globe, right? And uh, I, I uh, grew up and started my career in Europe. And so, um, you know, I have a personal, personal interest in that. Service design is still quite new in Canada. I wouldn't say not, it would, it's not even so much in terms of, there's awesome people, practitioners here, um, a couple of agencies even, uh, you, you know, really great groups. Service Design Canada is a, is a national group that's doing really, really good work. And that has been going for a while, but in terms of how it is, uh, within organizations and how it is in-house it's it's really just up and coming and uh mm -hmm. and even even product design in a sense is still kind of up and coming and so folks are excited about that um just about shipping product as as, as we've talked about it already covered that uh in many ways um and uh and and so i was looking forward to just getting those perspectives from different parts of the world and uh from different people in-house and the other aspect, I think, is just COVID, the lack of, you know, connections, uh, how, how nice this is and, and, and how people have, I think we've all in a different way kind of seized this opportunity now too. I mean, we have our meetings uh, remotely on video, then why not also have these kinds of groups and these kinds of kinds of use these kinds of opportunities to come together across uh, the, the wider field of the practice. Mm, yeah. I, I I, I can uh, really relate to what you're all saying and sort of it's nice to see that some of the ideas that I started out with actually come out to, uh, into play, especially what you also said, Rachel, that taking time to reflect is something usually people don't do. They're just busy working. And I think this these campfires are also just an excuse to uh, that give you a permission to stand still and reflect on what you're doing and also just listen rather than having to be uh, to have all the answers all the time. So uh, really nice to hear that you also experienced it in, in that way. Um, you already touched upon this, uh, but I would love to hear your take on what do you feel are some of the challenges that are specific to in-house service design? Uh, anybody want to start? Uh, I'll, he'll jump in. <laughs> uh, so I was actually thinking about this and I was like, oh, I wish I had said this earlier, but um, some of the, like, I think what, hmm, there, are, there can be so many unique ways that like, because, okay, organizations can be so unique in terms of their cultures, you know, based on who the leader, like who started the company, its history, its transformation over time or its evolution. Uh, and so much of that sort of DNA is embedded within the culture and that sort of it creates this environment that you have to understand in order to deliver certain like value with your service design and it's a very cryptic way of getting at like <clears throat> so at shopify for instance you know we try to build a lot in-house um if there's a third-party product we're like oh well let's just build it in-house we'll do it ourselves uh and the same thing goes with consultants and service delivery so it was like you know when i started out as a team of one um my unique challenge was that this was not a company that likes bringing external consultants on board. And so I couldn't sort of do a staff augmentation through a consultant model. Um, it was about having to be really scrappy and resourceful and spending a lot of time uh, educating people about service design and trying to shift mindsets. That was almost like the first milestone was like, okay, how do I get people to think differently? And how do I shift our process from one that is, oh, let's, you know, we're all experts internally and uh, we know what's, what the market needs and we're just gonna like ship things and we'll test and learn once it's in market. You know, it's sort of, uh, you know, we're, we, we are an exceptional company at shipping product and features. Like if you're a product designer and you wanna work on something that's actually in market, uh, we excel at that and I think it's, it's great. But from a service perspective, I, you know, coming on board, I was, I was taken back a little about um, how, how much room we had for progress in terms of our research methodology uh, and the rigor that we could apply to it. Um, and so the, the unique thing that I've been faced with is like, I can't bring on external consultants. Uh, I, I, you know, there's sort of a like, 
you have to show value in order to get more headcount, but you're in order to deliver that value, you kind of need like, you know, I, I, I like the, the notion of like the material of service design is, uh, is the organization. And so we have to kind of like, I have spent a lot of time trying to shift the organization to create the foundation upon which we can practice you know, good service design, and we can change these outcomes for humans in our in our ecosystem. And it's been a long journey, you know, of just trying to get there. And what was helpful with the campfires was chatting with other folks who, you know, where we have some similarities, like some folks were able to bring on um, external consultants, since that was different from my experience. And so hearing about that and how that may have helped them or hindered things or probably helped to, to demonstrate value faster. Whereas it's taken me longer to demonstrate value because I've had these restrictions. Um, but even to hear others who've had similar experiences, it's just, it's validating that we're like, okay, we are all trying, you know, you hear some, the trends start to emerge about the need for good data collection or the need for rigorous research or to help people think differently and what we're all doing in terms of visibility or process. Um, you know, it's uh, just, there's, there've been, strategies along the way that I think we've all shared. So, yeah. A lot, a lot, a lot of internal yeah. Uh, yeah. challenges that are specific uh, to, to, it's different than working at a consultancy or an agency. Um, what's your experience, Rachel? Uh, what have you found as specific challenges for in-house service designers? I think from the group level, it was really interesting that everyone had quite a different starting point based on where they fitted in the organization so where does service design even belong where you start right and you have to work within those constraints so i found it super interesting that everyone that we talked to here had just really different starting points um whereas i guess from my perspective i had to start really small so i think it could, Service design could be quite overwhelming because it could be quite big that, you know, changes has to be at a scale or we have that vision. We want things better and things to be seamless. But where's the starting point? And I think we can almost be over, and that's for me as well, um, how to build the smaller like allies or building up that trust, working with our stakeholders. And actually I decided not to use service design the word it's it's a word that maybe people don't understand that becomes a barrier itself it's actually um looking at where the business kind of vision is which is trying to make learners have better learning outcomes making learners you know kind of thinking in terms of bringing that business aspect into it which i never did before i was so focused on the users <laughs> perhaps and championing their voices first that I kind of have to then look at a more balanced view and that kind of balanced holistic view of both the business side and the learners has actually helped a lot so that was my I guess a, a big learning um, curve that I have kind of uncovered with my own reflections um, so that's been super interesting how would you Gary and I, you've, you've got a whole team, so I'm sure you have very specific service design challenges. Yeah, you know, working in, in, a, in a very large corporation, there's 85,000 people globally, and uh, there's a lot of history, obviously. It's an industry that's well-established, or, or definitely thinks that it's, it's well-established, and hundreds of years of history uh, in terms of financial services. Um, and uh, lots of silos, uh, very, very siloed, you know, things that you can expect, even if you don't work inside a huge organization yourself right now, you can probably expect and assume those kinds of things. Um, and there's a lot to it that's all kind of internal. Um, that's uh, not to be uh, in any way negative or nasty about it, but it's, uh, it's a game in and of itself, right? Um, there's a lot of uh, politics. Um, there's a lot of kind of that corporate structure and, and things moving that you got to kind of fit in um, in, in that. Uh, we do use consultants, uh, but with that, there's kind of there's kind of this idea, almost culture that new ideas uh, come from consultants. Um, they don't get to go very deep into the culture necessarily, but that's what that's why you might hire a consultant or a group of consultants 
uh, that they would inject something into the organization that would kind of change things. Now it makes diff things difficult, I think, challenging for uh, someone trying to work from the inside um, as part of that corporate workforce to change things uh, and to get buy-in, to get that, to, to even have people around you, around me kind of accept, accept me as, as someone who could be a, a change maker um, mm, from mm. within and, and collaborate with people um, to, to make that change. That's hard. Mm. Um, mm. Usually there's the idea that it, it comes from the, from the outside. Mm. It's interesting, like uh, you're almost at the other ex extreme spectrum from uh, Jacqueline, like uh, uh, bringing in consultancies in your case is like, uh, I don't know, getting in validation or a credibility. And uh, uh, yeah, on the other hand, there is no totally no room to get uh, any consultancy in. in interesting. And I, I've seen the different uh, flavors of, of this throughout the campfire. So that was uh, that was super interesting. Um, now, there are, are hopefully a lot of people listening who are in a situation where they recognize your stories, feel, uh, feel I, I wanted to say feel the pain, but feel the feel these situations. And I'm curious, like, um, what is your biggest piece of advice? And I know we need to generalize here, but uh, if you can give one piece of advice for an in-house service designer, what would it be? And let's do the round robin as we just did because it works fine. So Jacqueline, uh, how about you? Uh, um, I don't know if I could put it into one, but I know that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, okay. So the thing in hindsight, maybe the advice is if you're the first person, you know, whether it's service design or anything that's new to an organization is to really, I hope that interviewing processes and hiring and all that, like that you really get a chance to understand the organization that you're going to be doing this within. Uh, I think that's my advice is early on understand, like there are, I, I think I took for granted at Fannie that we got to use consultants because I was mm. able to show value so much quick, so much faster. And that's been a real limitation thus far. And I think, and I didn't think to ask, Oh, do you use external consultants? <laughs> So, you know, um, anyway, so my advice would be to, if you're, if you're doing new, if you're, if you're, if you're the first person doing something in house to really understand the organization and, and do all you can to chat with, how folks. would you do that? Yeah. How, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so you've uh, got this experience. How, what would you do different in understanding in our organization? Yeah. I mean, it, along the, you know, I would prepare questions. I think I often wing things. Um, so I probably winged all my interviews, you know, and, um, but in, in, you know, and I think that that can be fine if that's the way you roll. But in hindsight, I think it was almost a disservice to me in not preparing certain questions in advance that would have helped me understand a bit of the context that I was entering into, hmm. you know, a bit of the culture. Um, you know, look at blog posts, look at things that people have published online, authors from internal, you know, authors from within, anyone who's sharing stories, mm. uh, reach out to people on LinkedIn, ask them for, you know, virtual hanging out to just chat about their experience some more. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This is going to be the next article that we're going to publish on service design jobs, which will be about asking the right questions during a service design job interview. And I'm mm -hmm. going to invite you to help me out, <laughs> Jacqueline, and the rest yeah, of the service sure. design community. <laughs> this will be a really interesting one. Um, it's, I think it's critical, uh, yeah. It is. In a, uh, yeah, yeah. We'll get back to that for sure. <laughs> sure. Um, Rachel, how about you? Piece of advice. What okay. would you say to yourself looking back? <laughs> Well, just to add on the side note, Mark, with the whole uh, hiring, it'd be interesting what does that look like um, for hiring virtually and onboarding? So that's a question yeah. that I have in mind. <laughs> hmm. um, but yeah, um, my advice is to find the allies to build trust with because actually they will help you talk about things and share things and that's actually really impactful that's a way of showing value so there's a value of like you obviously doing the work and demonstrating and problem solving 
to say, yes, it's possible, you can, you can do it. But then there's the whole, actually, it's that building trust part, which is super critical. And that's something that I found in hindsight. And I only do things in hindsight when I reflect. And I only reflect if I do talks. <laughs> um, and that was one of the things, was a reoccurring theme in the last two years, I would say. So what's a good strategy to build allies? Well, you mentioned earlier, listen, really pay attention to what are their needs? What are they kind of fearful of? Um, and try to guide them and support them, be that kind of coach for them. So it's not like telling them what to do, it's finding them ways and opportunities to, to see things differently. Because we all have our own ways of seeing, and sometimes we are not aware of it. So instead of spending that energy being mm. frustrated, it's finding the novelty of ways. And it could be as simple as inviting them to something so they can be immersed in it, they can see it, they can experience it. Um, whether that's just even talking to an interview and they're being an observer, they can then talk about it afterwards. So mm. get involved in the process itself. Hopefully. And it, yeah, it's really cool because uh, Jacqueline, you said the organization is the design material, design material, which I totally agree with. Kari, you said it's a game and now you are talking about making allies. So uh, I feel like <laughs> we're, we're sort of demystifying what's going on here. Um, Kari, what would your tip be for uh, people uh, trying to create change as in-house service designers? How, how can they be more successful? Yeah, my first thought is to uh, uh, put it into two words that both start with the same letter. So I would say patience, but also passion. Um, patience in the sense that things do take time in in-house, working in-house, working in a large, large organization. You know, it's going to take time. Change takes time. Change is hard. Cultural change is hard. Change in terms of mindsets, change in terms of um, approaches, you know, all of that does take time um, you won't get that change at least in my experience though only through patience and only through sort of patiently working through these things and expecting that then incrementally one day it's going to happen um, so that's what you need passion for you need that passion to kind of uh, get you through those hard moments and hard days and times when you feel like hey like just as i was sharing in my uh um in my uh story last time um at least I, I, the, the key takeaway from it that I meant um, was to say that like you can, I, I've experienced how you can do something, get something done and feel like that got done right. And yet it hasn't actually really caught on. It hasn't really led to so much. And that's exactly a big part of my experience in a, in a big organization. You do need those allies. You do need kind of people who can almost be, uh, if you, get them to be your allies if you get them to be kind of the people who understand you and 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 work with you then they can start, sort of start to be ambassadors to start bring that message into other pockets and silos of the organization um you gotta let go of your own goals like i came in i'm the kind of person probably who comes in with a lot of my own you know this is what I want to do. This is the change that I know that it's that is important and this is what I want to make happen. But in, in, again, in this kind of organization, people around you, they already have their goals. They already have their tasks, task lists are full. Um, where it's, again, the game, there's incentives, there's uh, you know bonuses that get paid in a certain way and stuff. They know that. They, are, they may say, I know what you're getting at. It sounds good. I know my boss won't at the moment reward me for that though. So I'm not gonna, you know, go with you or that's just not gonna be the be the stuff that I focus on, but it because it actually doesn't get me further uh, in how things are currently. So allies and uh, and a lot of patience and a lot of passion. Hmm. Yeah, there was one uh, recurring theme through the campfires like you have to be a little bit crazy to be an in-house service designer. You have to have so much uh, patience, passion, per perseverance. Uh, it's definitely not something that is um, instantly uh, 
rewarding and instant gratification, then uh, you probably should be looking for a different kind of role. So um, I'm really curious, we'll be continuing our chats uh, in the campfires, either in video calls and in the WhatsApp group that we have. But I'm really curious if we would stop now and you had to look back on the campfires like in a year's time, um, what is the thing that you think you'll remember? Like the re designing for the remembering self. Jacqueline, how about you? Yeah, I mean, I think <clears throat> community is something I value tremendously. And um, I think it's it's one of my core values. That, um, and for me, I think, the, I mean, the thing that I will remember, I guess, is just the openness and the humility and the sort of general support that we all felt, you know, um, and there are a lot of folks, you know, just sharing really helps us have these rich conversations. And, um, and so I'll look back, I mean, we've, you know, we've definitely formed some great relationships as a result of this. And I think as I move forward, these are folks that I will turn to, um, to sort of just bounce, you know, bounce ideas off, off of them, as well as do a sanity check, and, you know, and, uh, and, you know, um, I think we'll all be, I think there, because it was such a, you know, it was sort of an intimate group. I think it allows us to get a little bit sort of closer with one another. So there is a bit of, you know, I think we all kind of have a certain degree of, of, um, concern for one another and wanting to make sure that we're all successful and that we all are able to do. Stay sane. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I think you put it well, it can be a very challenging space to enter into. Um, that's why different companies are at different maturity levels with it. And mm. service mm. design lives in different facets of the organization and all of that matters, leveling, titling. I mean, people say, Oh, it's just semantics, but you know, these things, uh, it, all of the variables, within an organization can all affect how service design plays out. And, uh, and this community has helped us sort of highlight a lot of those variables and what happens. Mm -hmm. hmm. How about you, Rachel? Um, I would say connection and inspiration. So I think it's giving us the space to share those kind of stories, which we wouldn't really talk about. I think on a day to day, it's not like we kind of, grab someone and kind of deep dive in depth and uncover a story um, in so much ground in such a short amount of time. So yeah, I, I kind of treasure that kind of moment and knowing that that is an hour, that permission to dedicate ourselves that time to do that. Um, so yeah, thank, thank you for that. Yeah, my pleasure. And uh, it's, it's it was uh, extremely, um rewarding to see that so th that this group was so open and so willing to share i think that was a huge part of the of the success um anything you want to add to that gary you had a different uh shorter experience with a with a group but maybe still anything that you'll remember in a year time yeah unfortunately a uh, much shorter experience but still very similar things i think similar points as rachel and jack when i um you know, design is such a wild, um, well, wild, wide, I meant to say, uh, field now. <laughs> Maybe and, both. <laughs> uh, both, yeah, for sure. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I definitely feel I can be in a room full of designers. And uh, but as I as I as I focus on services and, and uh, how to how to look at a service and how to improve a service and uh, service design specifically, um, it's been just really good to, to be in this in this group where right from the first moment um and even in the short experience that i've had you you, you know that you're with an, with a group of people who have similar focus as you do and, and they're battling with many of the same same challenges and uh and and just they kind of get you and and so it really opens opens you opens me up quickly um i feel like i can share things and people will more easily connect with that than perhaps you know sometimes my colleagues at work mm. or or in some other form around design what would happen yeah and if i look back at this uh and now in hindsight i think we sort of got the opportunity to get a peek 
into the journey that everybody's on and everybody's in a different stage of the journey but sort of heading in a similar direction and uh it's it's nice to learn about uh where somebody is and the challenges that they have faced and how how they have overcome them or or not and what drives somebody to do something so uh yeah i think we sort of uh, everybody's on a journey and we got a peak peek into that i'm going to continue the conversation with carrie jacqueline and rachel in the campfire group that we started but like i said at the beginning of this episode we're also starting a very new campfire group and that's starting on october 12th if this is something you're interested in joining um, this is how you can apply send me a video where you share uh, or answer three questions tell something about you yourself uh, you yourself that's the same <laughs> you your team and your organization tell something about the challenges that you face as an in-house service designer and the third thing is tell me something about when the campfires would be a success for you what's also really important is that you can commit five consecutive mondays starting october 12th for one hour at 4 p.m central european time um, because that's when we're going to do our campfire group sessions the deadline for the application is october 4th uh, so make sure that if you're interested you send in your application before that you can email me or send me a message on uh, linkedin uh, my email address is mark at servicedesignshow.com. And if you want to read uh, all about the campfires, head over to servicedesignshow.com slash campfire. You'll find the three questions that I just talked about over there. That's it from my end. Uh, even if you're not an in-house service designer, I hope that you enjoyed this episode and found it valuable. Keep making a positive impact and I'll catch you very soon.